A renowned scientist, Albert Einstein, said, The world would not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. So when you see corruption being perpetrated, please do not sit by and lament. Do something by reporting to the appropriate agencies. Hello and thanks for joining us on another episode of The Eagle. My name is Aisha Muhammad. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. On the program today, court orders forfeiture of late bodies from properties $1 million in the 3.9 billion naira fraud. Presidential amnesty fraud, EFCC secures final forfeiture of 732.85 million naira to the federal government. Amsgate claims first casualty as court sentences Air Vice Marshal Tony Omeni to 21 years in prison without an option of fine. This and more reports will come your way right after this timeout. Justice Okon Agbang of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has ordered the forfeiture of a property situated at number 6 Ogun River Street of Danube Street, Maitama, Abuja, traced to the late Air Chief Marshal Alex Badi and $1 million recovered from the property to the federal government. Amina Kawa has more on this. Also order forfeited are a shopping mall situated at plot 1386, order crescent, cadastral zone, we'll say 2. A duplex located at number 19, Kumasi Crescent, Wusi 2. A duplex located at number 14, Azope Crescent, of Kumasi Crescent, Wusi 2. A semi detached duplex at number 8A, Embu Street, by Sigma Apartments, Wusi 2, all in Abuja. Until his unfortunate death on December 18, 2018, the late body was being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, along with his company, Yalikam Nigeria Limited, for charges bordering on abuse of office money laundering, and converting public funds to personal use amounting to about 3.9 billion naira. It will be recalled that they were standing trial for an amended 14-count charge to which a not guilty plea was taken. Justice Agban had at the last urgent sitting on February 26, 2019, fixed March 4, 2019, for the company to open its defense. At the resume sitting, prosecuting counsel O.A. Atol Lagbe informed the court that Based on an agreement reached between the prosecution and the defense, there was a further amended charge of 10 counts before the court and a plea bargain agreement. They had filed a further amended charge dated March 1st, which was filed on March 4th, and also a plea bargain agreement with regards to provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and asked that the new charges to be read in open court. A guilty plea was thereafter entered for the second defendant, following which Atol Lagbe urged the courts to enter judgment based on the plea bargain agreement. He further prayed the courts to order the final forfeiture of the said properties affected in counts 1 to 10 of the amended charges and that the defendant to be convicted and wound up with respect to the plea bargain agreement and section 19 of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act. While ruling that all processes against the first defendant who was reported dead are hereby terminated, Justice Agbang further ordered the forfeiture of the said properties. The trial judge added that having regard to the plea bargain agreement duly executed by the parties, Iali Kamdenjo Limited is hereby wound up and the judgment shall be served on the Corporate Affairs Commission for execution. Amina Kawa reporting for The Eagle.
Corruption is dishonesty and illegal behavior by people in positions of trust. A public office is a public trust. Do not abuse positions of trust for private gains. Stay away from corruption. Nigeria is a great nation and it is our responsibility to make the country greater. If you notice any act of corruption, please report to the EFCC via info at efccnigeria.org or call 09-904-4751 or 9 You can also call 9 This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Justice James Oho of the Federal High Court in Abuja has granted the application of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, seeking the final forfeiture of 732.85 million naira to the federal government. The final forfeiture was secured following the usage of non-conviction-based forfeiture proceedings. Martha Eche tells us more. The forfeiture includes a plot of land situated at Katsina Road by Obomosho Road, Kaduna North Local Government, worth 190 million naira, all believed to be proceeds of unlawful activities. The forfeited sum of 732.85 million naira was stolen from the Presidential Amnesty Program Office by 17 respondents to the suit. The 17 respondents include Paul Tarela Boru, Hanafi Musa Moriki, Alote Asari Edem, Joshua Ebie Meyefa. Others are D. Wokoma, Bernard Ochoche, Cecilia Adebisi, Omofuma Faith, Olushegun Okpeyemi Okungbure, Begi Erepate, Mati Abdul, Stella Nnamati, Theresa Okoro, Chika Nsirin, Omonyeme Osumbo, Musa Odiringa, and Ode Martins Olajide. Jossi Tsoho had granted an interim for feature order on November 16, 2018, following the ex parte application filed by the lawyer to the EFCC, Barista Abba Mohammed. Investigations by the EFCC had uncovered the various sums of 124 million naira, 320 million naira, 68 million, 768,916 naira. 68,768,916 naira, 1,900,000 naira, 5,125,000 naira, 3 million naira, 28,595,755 naira, 6,137,000 naira, 40 million naira, 46,800,000 naira, 16,315,000 naira, 2,547,000 naira, 3,500,000 naira, 2,500,000 naira, 8,234,000 naira, 6,800,000 naira, 2,651,000 naira, and 1,970,750 naira traced to the respondents, respectively. The ex parte motion was brought before the court pursuant to Section 17 of the Advance Fee Fraud and Other Related Offences Act 2006 and Section 44, Subsection 2BK of the 1999 Constitution as amended, seeking for an order of interim for feature of the said sum and property. Justice Soho had earlier granted interim for feature of the said 732.85 million naira and ordered the EFCC to advertise the order in the newspapers for any interested party to show cause within 14 days on why the money should not be forfeited to the government. Following successful prosecution, the judge consequently ordered that the monies and property be permanently forfeited to the federal government. Martha Eche, reporting for The Eagle. Corruption is a kanka wamu wo, na kanka wamu wo. I say na kanka wamu wo, na kanka wamu wo. Corruption don't finish our country. Nigeria women rise up and come together, oh, oh yeah. Every woman come out, but we fight corruption together, oh. Every woman fall out, but we kill corruption together, oh. Them they thief our money, ah. Send them over to Ibo. Children they suffer every day. Better school in no day. Nigeria women come, oh. Women from every sector. 
out Make we fight corruption We won't kill our country Them go collect money for light Chop the money Light we no see Good road and good health and call We no see I said na ka ka Join the EFCC in its crusade to rid Nigeria of corruption. Niger, now we all know. The first convict in the ongoing prosecution of the arms gate was recorded by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on February 28, 2019, when Justice Inamdi Dingba of the Federal High Court Abuja found Air Vice Marshal Tony Omenu retired guilty of the amended three-count charge brought against him by the EFCC and sentenced him to an accumulated 21 years jail term, seven years on each of the three counts to run concurrently. Martha Eche has details on what transpired in court. Over to you, Martha. Air Vice Marshal Tony Omenyi, who was arraigned by the EFCC on November 11, 2016, along with his company, Huzi Nigeria Limited, for abuse of office and money laundering to the tune of 136,323,000 naira only, was convicted on February 28, 2019. He had pleaded not guilty to the charges, thereby setting the stage for his trial. After calling five prosecution witnesses and tendering over 20 documents which were admitted in evidence, the EFCC closed this case on April 17, 2018. Delivering judgment, Justice Dingba noted that the explanations given by the defense in the course of the trial were not credible enough and that the court was satisfied that the prosecution proved its case beyond every reasonable doubt. The trial judge, having fully reflected on the defense as well as evaluated the evidence before him, agreed with prosecution that the defense was a sham. The judge further queried the motivation the defendant had of spending his personal funds towards the execution of contracts awarded by the Nigerian Air Force on behalf of the contractor, when the proper thing to do was to get the Nigerian Air Force to expend the funds on behalf of the contractor to ensure the project was done. He stated that by the state of the law and the entire circumstances of the case, the money received by the defendant has played out in count one, two and three by themselves raised criminal abilities against the defendants. He did not believe that explanations given by the defense to the charges were credible. The court further held that in the final analysis, the funds received by the defendants as contained in counts one to three are kickbacks in the contracts awarded by the Nigerian Air Force. Justice Dingba said it has looked at either as a direct bribe or kickbacks or as a share of revenue or profits with a business partner, so long as a source of the funds is from the Nigerian Air Force and linked to the execution of contracts of the Nigerian Air Force. He therefore stated that the monies as contained in counts one to three are rooted in corruption. The trial judge thus found him guilty on the three counts and sentenced him to seven years in prison to run concurrently. Justice Dingba also ordered Huzi Nigeria Limited, being a corporate entity, to fulfill the sum of 60 million naira in the custody of the EFCC to the federal government. The judge advised public officers with any duty or any contract awarded by a government agency with a contractor to at all times operate at an arm's length with the said contractor. Martha Eche, reporting for The Eagle. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Still on convictions, Amina Kawa is standing by to tell us more from our Gombe office. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Gombe Zonal Office, has secured the conviction of Yusuf Usman and Sani Ahmed before Justice Abakar Jaru of the Gombe State High Court on a two-count charge bordering on conspiracy and stealing. They were arraigned on February 27, 2019 and pleaded guilty to the charges. The trial judge thereafter fixed March 4, 2019 for conviction and sentencing. 
can two of the charge rates that you Yusuf Usman and Sani Ahmed at Gombe in the Gombe Judicial Division of the High Court of Gombe State with Inted did dishonestly commit theft with fraudulently convert the sum of $44,700 from one Abdullahi Nobunkari by falsely claiming the said sum was meant for the facilitation of a construction contract awarded by the Gombe State Government to your own use and thereby committed an offence contrary to and punishable under Section 286 and 287 of the Penal Code Law, Laws of Northern Nigeria. Justice Jauro convicted them and sentenced them to three years in prison on each count to run concurrently. The court further ordered an application of prosecution counsel, I.O. Akandi, that restitution be made to the nominal complainant with six months of the judgment to be effected by the EFCC for the whole amount. Amina Kawa reporting for the EO. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, since its inception, has been collaborating with other agencies to enlighten the public on the ills of corruption, economic and financial crimes, and other societal vices. It is in the light of this that the Commission signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the National Orientation Agency, NOA, to create awareness on the dangers of vote buying and selling in the just concluded 2019 general elections. Elias Haruna Bala went on the streets of Abuja to find out the views of the public on the Commission's involvement. Over to you, Ilyasu. For the first time in the history of Nigerian elections, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, got actively involved. The impact, which many have judged as very positive, has been overwhelming. There are a few others who felt the EFCC should have no business in elections. It is against this backdrop that the Eagles crew took to the streets of Abuja to have the view of a cross-section of Nigerians. Some of the respondents were of the opinion that EFCC had no business in electioneering process. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think uh, every, uh, EFCC has anything to do no, with election issues. Well, my take on that is EFCC, their job is to go for crime and money, money laundering and no kind of issues. But I don't see why all concerns election with EFCC monitoring it. Well, there is impact on it because what they did, it was a very good thing. I recommend EFCC on that, what they did in this election. While others felt EFCC's presence at the post is necessitated. Well, I, it will be fantastic. But if EFCC can go about and, you know, apprehend people that commit this crime. If, if they also put that into practice in the elections, because well, there are so many vices in the election that them themselves can also help to eradicate. So it will be very, very nice. I think it's a perfect move. It's a really good one because anything that will get Nigeria working well, it's, it's a good idea. I believe it's a good one because their efforts make hearing the name EFCC. People will even be scared of doing anything that is that's not 
going to make the country move forward. Like in terms of corruption that they are fighting, anybody now is very careful with everything about corruption. Yes, if you get involved, why not? It should. It should make some impact. There should be, it should create some kind of insanity, sanity in the whole system. When asked how to rate the Commission's monitoring of elections, these are what some respondents has to say. EFCC's participation is good. It's a welcome development, you know. It's part of sanitizing the entire process. To me, like I, I went to cast my vote, then I believe, yeah, I believe I can give them 80% the try. Respondents were also asked on the impact of EFCC's involvement on the elections, and this is what they have to say. I would say election this year it's is better. It's far, far better compared to the previous months. I've never seen an election like this as a person do. I think it was, the conduction was, within Abuja where I voted, especially at my polling unit, it was perfect. It was well conducted, transparent, I would say that. It, it is giving out message that Nigeria is moving to a better place, that uh, we have to be more careful. There are people, there are, there's, there's this eagle eye watching out for us, so we have to do our best in tearing our criminal acts. We have to look forward to a better Nigeria. So it begins with our personal efforts not to cooperate with those who have criminal tendencies. But I, I believe it's a right step in the right direction. Someone basically has to start that campaign. And the way EFCC is going about it, I think to an extent we'll get to that level of near perfection. It's a gradual process because they just involved them in. I don't know if they are doing. They just, they are just, they are just, they are just involved. I believe it's with time people will get. To the they are trying. Yes, I, I, I think so, because where I voted, I was told I didn't see. I was told that uh, some party agents brought money to the polling booth, and they were afraid of sharing the money for the fear of the EFCC. It will be recalled that the EFCC set up a tax force to monitor persons who intend to fund board buying. That, to a very large extent, was able to curtail the menace in the country. It is no doubt that the EFCC is winning the fight against corruption on all fronts. I am Ilyasu Harunabala, reporting for the Eagles. Thank you, Ilyasu, for that Vox Pop. It is our hope that Nigeria will soon be rid of corruption and a better place for all to live. And with that, we have come to the end of today's episode of The Eagle. You too can be part of this program by sending your inquiries and suggestions to the eagle at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official efcc or official efccng at gmail.com. You can like our page on facebook.com forward slash official efcc or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC and of course you can visit our Instagram page at official EFCC to watch our programs and other activities please log on to youtube.com for slash official EFCC my name is Aisha Mohammed I leave you with this parting words fight corruption be the one who helps build a better society goodbye and God bless Nigeria <laughs>